since animating a camera starts with the same process as animating a model, the first thing I need to do is add the keyframes. I'll then use Animation Ribbon, a 3D representation of the animation path, to make adjustments to the animation and go over a few strategies for working with a camera animation. Before I get started, I'll switch to preview mode to have real-time interaction with my model and create a copy of the free camera with the keyboard shortcuts Ctrl-C and Ctrl-V. I'll double-click on it to activate it and rename it to Camera Flyby. To start the animation, I'll right-click on the camera from the Camera tab and select Add Keyframe. A red dot appears on the camera's thumbnail, letting me know that an animation has been applied to that camera. I'll use the shortcut Ctrl-L to show the timeline, make sure Auto Fit to Last Keyframe is turned off, and move the red flag to around 5 seconds. I'll make sure Auto Keyframing is turned on, and then move the yellow flag to around 2 seconds. With that set up, I'll move the camera with the Alt keys to create a new keyframe around the center of the model, and since Auto Keyframing is turned on, the new keyframe is created right at the yellow flag. I'll move the yellow flag to the red flag and move the camera behind the model to add the final keyframe. Now, when I move the yellow flag back to the start and click play, I can see how the camera moves across the model. I can make adjustments to the animation by snapping to keyframes with the track arrows and adjusting the camera, but it can be hard to get a sense of how this affects the overall animation this way. Instead, I'll switch to the free camera and zoom out until I can see the camera flyby camera along with the path it follows. This path is called the animation ribbon, and the colors on it show how quickly the camera is moving at that point, while the white cubes are the keyframes. Green on the ribbon is a faster movement, while yellows and reds are a slower motion at that point. So if I select the second keyframe from the timeline, and increase the motion ease in and out, the ribbon around that keyframe changes from green toward red. If I play the animation from the beginning, the effect is apparent as the camera almost stops at the second keyframe. While the color cues add insight to the ribbon, the main advantage of using the ribbon is that I can directly manipulate the keyframes and camera with the Move tool. I'll enable the Move tool, Double click on the second keyframe in the viewport and move it closer to the model with the manipulator. To see how this change will look in the outputted animation, I'll switch back to the camera flyby camera and play the animation from the beginning. It looks good, so I'll switch back to the free camera to make the next change. Adjusting the animation in this way is great for understanding of the whole animation, but switching between cameras constantly can get tedious, especially when many adjustments are being made. I can eliminate this tedium by going to the View dropdown and, under the Multi Viewports option, selecting Dual Horizontal Viewports. I'll make the second viewport active by clicking on it and then switch to the Camera Flyby camera. Now I can directly manipulate the animation ribbon in the free viewport and press play to view the final animation in the camera flyby viewport. I can even make adjustments to the animation ribbon while the animation is playing. By animating with two viewports, I'm able to take advantage of all the animation capabilities offered in Visualize at once. As a final note, the camera position isn't the only thing that can be animated. Many of the special camera effects, such as depth of field and post-processing options, can also be animated, and I'd recommend making adjustments with Auto Keyframing active to see what kind of effects can be animated by the auto-addition of new keyframes within the timeline.